Hello and welcome! I'm DDF Racer, and in this video, I'm going to do something a little bit different than what I normally do. I'm just going to take a step back, I'm just going to talk to you guys for a few minutes, basically. Um, it's been a busy year here in 2019, a lot has happened, so I'll do my best not to ramble on, but I wanted to start out by saying that this channel would not be here today if it wasn't for you guys. Your continued support is absolutely incredible. Every single video, every single live stream, you keep coming back to watch, to like, to comment, and to subscribe, so... I honestly can't, I just can't thank you enough for that. Honestly guys, it is absolutely incredible. Um, over the course of the last 12 months, I've gone from 100 subscribers to almost 1000 subscribers. Um, I'm currently sat on 980 as I record this uh, video to the camera right now, but by the time I actually edit and upload everything, who knows? You could be the one that tips me over the edge, so if you aren't already subscribed, you should maybe consider doing so now. Anyway, enough introduction guys, what actually happened this year? Well, only three days in, longtime channel supporter Adam Rainey suggested I should create a Discord server to help build a community. Now, I was a little bit skeptical at the time as I honestly didn't think anyone would bother turning up, but hey, I was wrong. The engagement this year has been amazing, and sure enough, there's always someone on there having a chat, so link in the description. If you're not already on Discord, you should probably go and head over there right now, guys. Quite a lot of my recent content has actually come from Discord and a lot of people who have suggested content there, you know, uh, types of races I should do. And it's, it's really helped keep the channel fresh and has really challenged me to try some new things as well. Pretty quickly into the year, I reached that 100 subscriber mark and celebrated by doing an F1 1998 at Spa race. Now this was quite important to me as it was the first ever Formula 1 race I remember watching and I'm going to be honest with you, it was absolute torture to record. You honestly have no idea how many takes this took to get right. Also in January, I uh, had a comment from someone you may know, Jimmy Broadbent, uh, on one of my endurance racing videos, one of my R Factor 2 Daytona videos. Now, this may not seem like such a big thing, but for someone who was still completely new to the YouTube sim racing game, to have the biggest YouTube sim racer out there say hi was... Oh, well, I'm not ashamed to admit it, I was, I was fangirling a little bit that day. Now, not much happened in February, and in March, I moved house, so I had to take a kind of enforced break while I had no internet and no sim rig setup, that kind of thing, and decided to take this downtime as an opportunity to upgrade big time. Most importantly, the uh, the, the, the ridiculous VR sticker that I, I wear on my Oculus Rift headset, um, but I also invested in a uh, gaming headset with a mounted microphone, as opposed to the studio uh, boom mounted mic that I used to record before. That was a little bit inconsistent with the audio. I wanted something a bit more, you know, it followed my face as I moved my my view around the room. I also invested in a proper webcam, a Logitech C920. Uh, also with that I got some adjustable lights to make sure you weren't just having a look at me in the dark. You know, lighting makes such a big difference to the webcam, so this this was a this was a must. And I also spent a lot of time upgrading my sim hub and overlays over the top of the gameplay, uh, including the intro stinger that you see at the start of every video and every stream. Now moving on to April, I, I was starting to get a little bit fed up with R-Factor 2's technical issues and wanted to try something different. I installed Race Room Racing Experience and immediately loved it, and, and looking back actually, getting Race Room is probably the thing that's helped this channel grow the most over the course of this year. Now more on that in a moment. May was a bit of a quiet one. I, I had a few videos here and there, but nothing really to write home about. And at this point of the year, I'd say my motivation was probably at an all-time low. You know, there was there wasn't much happening. There uh, wasn't much appearing to change on the channel. I felt like I was losing momentum. Uh, my videos kind of felt stale. That kind of thing. I was just doing the same thing over and over. Things would pick up though very soon. At the start of June, longtime sim racing buddy and collaborator Ed Trevelyan Johnson, who I'd worked with on a couple of Studio 397 projects, with him being the trailer guy and me being the music guy, uh, invited me along to commentate on the Virtual Endurance Championship 24 Hours of Le Mans. Now, not being particularly familiar with the event at the time, or with ever commentating before for that matter, I reluctantly said yes. For those of you who don't actually know what the Virtual Endurance Championship is, the uh, the VEC is an online league for R Factor 2 and hosts endurance races as part of an official championship, much like the real-life equivalent, the World Endurance Championship. 
Now, with me being based in Australia, naturally the time difference worked out great, as, as I could fill in for the European night shift when they needed people the most, and it would still be a convenient time of day for me. The event itself was a massive success, and I, I ended up diving straight in at the deep end, doing about seven hours of commentary. Not gonna lie, I was ridiculously nervous, and had to take some last minute convincing to actually come on the broadcast, but uh, once I got going, it was easy, and just settled right in. Had some great chats with Lewis McGlade, Simon Marshall, just in Sudden and Oshin Puhaga. I met so many new people this weekend, and this was the time that I actually got properly introduced into the world of the VEC. Now, my channel was still really small at this stage, so I definitely had the feeling that I was the, uh, uh, the small fish in the big pond, um, but I absolutely loved it and hoped that maybe one day I could join these guys on track. It just, it just seemed like such a cool thing to be part of. Now by this point I was also really getting into race room, to the point where I felt compelled to tell people about it. I just wanted to let people know about this hidden gem of a racing sim, and I don't know, just another race against the field of AI just, just wasn't going to cut it. So yeah, I sat down, had a think, and wrote a script, kind of imagine what kind of footage would work best over the top, and things just spiralled out of control. It took me a few weeks to record and edit everything together, but looking back on it now, it was probably the single most effective thing I did this year in terms of getting viewers on board, and over a third of all of my current subscribers have come directly from this video. Now, July was back to being a steady month where I spent the majority of my time making videos about the new r 2 Tartus cards, and also challenging my dad to a lap around the Nordschleifen. July also saw my channel hit 250 subscribers. Now, moving on to August, I decided to take the plunge and register for the SRC Academy, hoping to get my online racing license and progress into the big boys league of the VEC and just become a driver in that series myself. Now, the SRC consists of two races over the course of two weeks, and it's not about being the fastest driver, you just have to try and be the most consistent and safe driver. Now, I also decided to make these events my first ever live streams too, something that I had been promising you guys so many times earlier in the year but just never got around to it so i figured hey this is going to be a live event with other competitors on track might as well do it no time like the present in hindsight it was actually a really good decision because the thing about the whole src vec community is that they're all in it together and i didn't quite realize what i was tapping into by streaming these races live a lot of people turned up well by the standards of someone who's doing their first ever live stream, that is. And this resulted in by far the most watch time of anything I'd ever done on the channel to this date. I mean, just look at this huge spike in the analytics. Despite a couple of scruffy races, I managed to get my license, and pretty much immediately afterwards, I had a message from Ed saying he wanted to recruit me into his Zancho racing team. Ed being the guy who suggested I should get my license in the first place, I figured there was some kind of master plan in play here. I, uh, I'm still suspicious that he's planning a coup and he's, he's going to take over the channel at some point. Um, <laughs> you just got to keep an eye on that pesky Ed. He'll get you. In all seriousness though, I just want to take a moment to give him a massive shout out for his continued support throughout the year. Every time I go live or post a video, he's usually already posted the link in 10 different places and he's done so much work behind the scenes helping me test the car setups and improving the broadcast overlay amongst many other things. And I think it's safe to say that without him, my streams and my channel just wouldn't have gone anywhere near as smoothly. Side note for August too, I had this missed opportunity. Red Bull F1 style karting suit that was just a little bit too small and was only $90 from a local op shop. Probably one of my biggest regrets from this year was not buying it and then either taking it to the alteration shop or just hanging it on the wall behind me as some decorations. Oh well. Anyway, progressing to the next stage after getting my license was the natural thing to do, considering the success of the live streams also. It was round about this time that there was also the announcement of the Virtual Le Mans Cup Championship, which honestly couldn't have come at a more perfect time. Instead of the 8 hour, 12 hour, you know, those kind of 24 hour races of the VEC, the VLMC was only going to be 2 hours, which was a lot more suitable considering that the server for these races is based in Europe, and that means I have to go racing in the middle of the night here in Australia. The technical side of things still needed a little bit of work though at this stage, as um, back then I was still using OBS Studio for recording, and I had a plugin for chat, I had a plugin for overlays, I had something for this, something for that, all these different things coming together, and there was always some kind of problem when I was going live or recording videos, and I just seemed like there'd be a much more efficient way to do things. So, I decided to do a bit of research and migrate my entire setup over to Streamlabs OBS, with built-in YouTube integration, all that kind of thing. I think this really helped with the overall look and feel of the videos, and just not to mention it made the workflow so much easier too. 
Now it was around this time that I also really got to know my fellow Zancio teammates and got introduced to the likes of Bryce, Nick, James and the Fortem brothers. Prepping for the VLMC was something special and as a complete noob to this team-based online racing thing, I just had a great time running practice laps and figuring out the setup, spending hours in the voice chat, you know, just really getting to know them and, and I really felt like I was part of a team. Moving on to October, I hit the 500 subscribers mark and at this point it really seemed like momentum was starting to build. You know, lots of people were still finding the channel through the race room video that I mentioned earlier. Cogs started turning and I started to realize maybe, maybe I should be doing more of that type of video instead, you know, not just the one-off races with live commentary. Um, you know, as much as I actually enjoy going driving, perhaps for the channel it, it would have been a good idea to make videos with some more production value, some more editing, you know, just basically a little bit more thought out. To mark the 500 milestone though, I was set the rather ridiculous challenge of attempting to write a song from scratch whilst completing a lap of the Nordschleife by none other than Jan Mardenborough, uh, the GT Academy competition winner and real world Le Mans, Formula 3 and GT racing driver. Honestly guys, this one was so much fun to do. I I don't think either the song or the lap turned out particularly well, but um, that wasn't the point. Moving on to November, and the VLMC Championship was well underway by this point. Uh, the second round at the Nürburgring though was probably when things reached their low point between myself and R Factor 2. Now I've always had technical difficulties with this sim, but I've always soldiered on, you know, just found a way around it, you know, just found a way to make it work. The uh, the sim itself is just absolutely worth it. It's the best out there when it all comes together. The day-night cycles, the wet-dry cycles, the dynamic track conditions, the awesome physics, the force feedback, it's just, yeah, it just works so well when it actually works. But in this race, with only 12 minutes to go, after a storming comeback drive and some amazing battles, I suffered a screen freeze and a graphics crash. <sighs> race over. <laughs> so frustrating. I'm, I'm still not quite sure how I held it together on the live stream, but I did, and I think that those of you who were watching with me shared the pain at that moment. Now, the silver lining, I suppose, was the incredible support that poured in. You know, so many suggestions on how to fix this, so many, so many well wishes, and so much sympathy for what happened. You know, we've all been there, and it's, yeah, just one of those things. I also had one of my competitors join me for the highlights video, Mikolai Malichki. You know, he, he came on board because we had such an amazing fight in the race. He just felt compelled to uh, take part in the highlights and share his commentary and talk through the battle that we had in that race. It's some of the best racing I've ever had. And to be able to sit next to him and analyze it together after the race was just so cool. And part of the reason why I love racing in the VLMC, it just, it just brings all the competitors together and fosters a real sense of community. That said, I had a problem to fix, as I didn't want this kind of screen freeze to happen again, and spent the next couple of weeks reinstalling everything I could think of. Graphics drivers, VR drivers, R Factor 2 itself, I went through all of my individual graphics settings, streaming settings, and just anything that could have caused a screen freeze, I did something to fix it. Honestly, you have no idea how long I've spent trying to fix this problem, so yeah. The month after, when I suffered another screen freeze during the next race in Imola in December, you can just imagine my frustration. Now I really need to figure out what's going on here as I just, I can't keep on racing in R-Factor 2 if I can't trust the fact it'll hold together for two hours a month. It wasn't all negative in December though, um, actually that's, <laughs> that's a bit of a huge understatement. Uh, 2019 definitely saved the best of the last. My new favourite sim, Race Room, released a huge update only a few weeks before the end of the year and I saw this as an opportunity for the channel. After a couple of all-nighters, I managed to put together another video in similar style to my previous Race Room video which did so well, and I managed to get this out before the vast majority of other YouTubers, and the results? Well, just unbelievable. It, it just clicked for some reason. I think because there wasn't much content out there apart from the official patch notes at the time, people were people were searching, people were trying to find out what this new update was all about, and yeah, there's just something to be said for being quick off the mark, and this this video alone has shot right up to the top of my, um, my analytics with record views and watch time of anything I've done, uh, bringing in so many of you new subscribers in the past couple of weeks too. Some other new people are also brought into the channel were the guys over at OzNZ Racing. Shortly after the December updates video went live, I got an invite on Discord to join them for some racing. Now, these guys are a group of mostly Aussies and Kiwis who use race room for weekly events, so let me just go over that again. People in a convenient time zone who also use my favourite sim? Perfect. 
Now, nothing against the VLMC, of course, but there's just something to be said for not staying up till 3 in the morning to go racing. And the race itself with these OzNZ guys just couldn't have gone any better. They are an absolute blast, just hilarious, just incredibly great company, and from the moment I joined the server, I felt welcome. The racing itself was top-notch too, and probably one of the most enjoyable races I've had in a long time, and with these guys hosting events every Tuesday, I'm looking forward to joining them plenty more next year. In a single moment, I'd probably say crossing the line at Silverstone in the VLMC preseason race. Um, just having all of my Zancho teammates on the radio as I crossed the lines, cheering me on and supporting me, it was just, just incredible. But in a more general sense, I guess probably the highlight of the year was putting so much time into my first race from review video. Just the time I spent recording and editing, it was just very well spent in hindsight. Probably my Race Room Custom Championship series, to be honest with you. I, I expected these videos to do quite well, but they just tanked. Nobody watched them. I, I thought that having a series of videos all connected with championship standings and you know some context, some narrative, would, would really draw people in and keep them coming back you know, week after week, but it just never worked. Now, I think at the time, most of my subscribers and most of the people who watched my channel were R Factor 2 people, so... Putting race room content out was probably something a little bit different, and in hindsight, I should have waited a little bit longer until I had more race room people on board, but who knows, maybe now I could try that again and it would work better. Let me know. Thoughts in the comments, guys. Now, if I could do something differently this year, it would definitely be do more live streams and just also worry about the smaller details less. I spent so much time this year tweaking the sim hub overlays, messing with streamlabs, just there's loads of small things that didn't really make a huge difference but cost me a heap of time. Now I'm not saying that these things don't make a difference into the overall scheme of things, you know, they just they do add production value, they do make the videos look better, but at the end of the day, content is what matters with YouTube, and if you're not putting content out, no matter how polished and produced it is, then you're just not going to get people through the door. And also speaking about that as well, I um, didn't really start thinking about my videos and you know sitting down and doing scripts and putting a plan together and just thinking about what would what would perform well. Um, and once I started doing that, you know, sort of July, August onwards, um, I just saw an explosion of people come through the door and just, just start to watch my content on this channel. But like I said though, the tweaks and the differences towards SimHub, towards settings, production value, all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes does make a difference, so I'm not discounting it entirely. I mean, just for reference, I want to show you some footage from 12 months ago, and I want to show you some footage from one of the most recent videos that I've recorded, and just let you look at the difference. Hello and welcome, I'm DDF Racer, and today I'm getting back in the USF 2000 car. Hello and welcome, I'm DDF Racer, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the brand new Dubai Autodrome for race room racing experience. So many cars, nose to tail, everyone's going to be on the slipstream, and someone's being pushed out onto the grass ahead of us there. That's going to slow the whole lot down. <laughs> We're going to make it four wide. Three wide. And still there. Yellow flag, watch out. Still there, still there. You're in the middle. Left side, we're on the left, free wide. Sector one is clear. Getting very nervous now, he's, he's gonna send it. I know he's gonna send it. Have to think about holding it nice and tight. Getting defensive. All right. Oh! Yellow flag, stay sharp. Clear on the right. Thank you. Sector 1 is clear. I think in the coming year I'm going to be taking a shift away from doing one-off races with live commentary and just more towards live streams and edited polished videos. Um, things like the Race Room Tuesday Thunder Oz NZ events and my VLMC races, my December updates view, the, the things I've been doing in the past month which really seem to have brought a lot of you guys in to watch and subscribe on the channel so yep that's going to be my focus for 2020 and i'm also going to be introducing some new titles as well which i've been working on over the past few weeks to get ready to record and tweak settings and make sure everything looks good before i start making videos we're talking dirt rally 2.0 which by the way is an absolute nightmare to record in vr and things like toka 2 maybe a set of course a competition maybe even iRacing if 
if I decide to pull the trigger and invest in iRacing, if I can afford that, then yeah, you could see some more of that content on this channel this year too. And I'm also hoping to get some collaborations with other YouTubers in the works as well. No names so far, because things are still very much in the works, but keep an eye out for that on this channel. But at the end of the day, all I want to do really is make videos that you guys want to watch. So. The only way that's going to happen is if you let me know, either in the comments in this video or in Discord. Head on over to Discord, link in the description. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video guys and running through 2019 with me. Your support has been awesome this year. Like I said earlier in the video, I, I wouldn't have done any of this without you and this channel wouldn't be possible without you. So as we creep ever so closely to the 1000 subscriber mark, I want to give yourselves a pat on the back and just, yeah, just big thanks. Looking forward to doing plenty more exciting content in 2020 and having you there as well, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great new year, and I'll see you next year. It's very flattering that you've let me rant on about a an industry I do not really participate in. But um, yeah, that's just those are my two cents about about video uh, sim racing stuff. Mate, as as um, as someone who I've come across in the sim racing industry and com complete chance you know you found my channel and i know we've it's been good getting to know you it's been good it wasn't chance no I, man, you, you found I me told you, you still, i told you yeah. I, yeah i i like yeah. <laughs> what's the what's the right word uh yeah it was like a military operation <laughs> like i i i, I, I don't know I, I i investigated your channel probably for a couple of days or something like that i was like yes He'll do. <laughs> I like the music. Uh, but just just the way it's kind of developed from that point onwards, though, you know, like it was a, like, hey, hey, Dan, you know, you do cars, you do music, do you want to do music for cars? I was like, sweet, okay. But then it's kind of developed into this little, hey, do you want to come sim racing? And, you know, like along the way, like, you, you've always had time yep. to... And you bought it hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> uh... <laughs>